Quick little video on these differentials. The reason I chose the one I did, um, I honestly feel that changing the rear gear in a 400 is probably the biggest performance gain you're going to get bang for the buck. A lot of people think the 400 is kind of quick, but honestly, I think we all know that if you put this car up against any modern car, um, even the, the six cylinder, like an E320 with the 104 engine, um, it's, it's probably not going to be any quicker. And it's sad because there's a lot of performance potential in that car, but they choked it down so much with that, that rear gear that I think just, just making these modifications, um, are going to make, it's going to feel like you just put another hundred horsepower in that car. So these cars came with the smaller differential and less it was a V8 car, 400 or 500 E or one of the 104 engined, uh, 124 cars. So that's my understanding. I am not a differential aficionado. Uh, these, these, uh, I've touched hundreds of them, resealed them. I've been around these differentials my whole adult life, but you know, I don't know, um, what ones swap, uh, with, with these mods and without these mods and you have to do this and do that. I've had to learn all that on my own as well. And that's just on this particular car, but I wanted a significantly better rear gear for this car than the 224. And that is this one. This is the original differential out of that car. It's an ASR car, which did not help. Um, I think it's going to be a lot easier if you have a just ABS car, a non ASR car. So, the the gear that I wanted only came in one specific car and it did have to be the larger case. This is the small case. I needed a larger case differential, uh, which came in the V8 cars, but it also came in the R129 300 SL. And that particular early 300 SL came with, in my opinion, the best rear gear uh, for performance anyway, and that's the 3.69 rear gear. So that that was what I was stuck with making work. Now the 300 SL, as far as I can remember, um, you know, never came with traction control. So I had to basically accept a non-traction control rear differential. Um, it did come with the large one um, that the V8 cars came with, but it did not come with uh, the independent speed sensors at both of the uh, differential outputs. And that changes quite a bit. Um, that changed, that changed the axles. Uh, it made it very difficult for me. So basically on this car, I'm going to have to run the smaller, uh, rear axles instead of the larger. And here you can see the difference. Um, the one on the right being obviously the V8 differential one on the left being the six cylinder. I am going to run the six cylinder axles for the time being. And if I break them, then I have another plan in mind. But you cannot swap the stub axles from a non-ASR into an ASR because of this reluctor wheel. And um, you know, this, it, it, it's dimensionally different. I did pull the, the stub axles out of the, uh, the 300 SL differential that I put in the car to make sure they wouldn't swap. They will not swap. So I have to go down to smaller axles. So that car will have small axles. I'm thinking maybe if, if I break axles or I have issues with these axles, I will probably attempt to find an early, uh, maybe 140 body or an early 500 SL that has the larger differential that's non ASR. And at that point I could probably swap out the stub axles. Um, the only way for me to know at this point would be to buy a used differential. I'm just not willing to do that right now. So we'll see how these hold up. Maybe they hold up fine. I don't ever have to mess with it. But the I will say too that the the 104 engined 124s with the large case differential um, came with the standard subframe. So you're going to get these mounting points for uh, the 104 cars. It was the 400 and the 500 that came with the larger cover um, to to help stabilize it, you know, it's, it's wanting to twist in the car. So this gave it a little bit more leverage uh, to keep the differential in place. And uh, it also came with a, a different rear subframe, which is more of a 129 style tubular subframe. 
Um, and mine's really, really bad in this car. You'll see it at some point. Um, but if I have an issue with that rear subframe rusting through or, or something failing, uh, I would probably just go ahead and install a standard 124 subframe and just modify it to take on this uh, wider because the mounting point would be obviously right around here and you would have to, to bring out the mount to, uh, to, to be able to weld it up and, and utilize this rear cover. I think this is, this is pretty beneficial. You could just put the standard cover, the standard 124 cover on it and run the rear subframe probably just fine. I, I really doubt you're going to have too many issues, but, um, Again, I think that that rear differential, uh, the gear, the 3.69 gear in that car, I wouldn't do anything else to a 400E without putting a good gear in it. If you have an ASR car, it's it's just not that simple, obviously, because you're going to have limp home mode and a bunch of other issues. But if I had a non-ASR 400E, I, I do believe they made those. Uh, pff, I wouldn't waste any time. I'd just get a rear differential for it with a 369. It'd be an early 300 SL, like I said. But I did run these. Uh, Tremec's got a really nice calculator online, and you can see uh, the the difference that that gearing is going to make. I took a standard uh, standard 400e standard tire size. Um, I, I think I used a TDM manual to look up the gear ratios and put them in here. And it's gonna it's gonna give you uh, where this transmission is going to shift. If you're shifting at red line, you're going to do almost 52 miles an hour in first gear. And that's just uh, a good way for me to, to explain it to people is like trying to ride a 10 speed bike in 10th gear. And it's going to be, it, once you get up to speed, you're probably going to think it's great, but trying to accelerate, it's just going to be immensely difficult. And, and, and with the same strength person, have them accelerate, you know, through third gear on that 10 speed. And that's the difference. That's the difference you're going to see uh, in acceleration. Uh, you're going to be able to use that power a lot better. The leverage is going to be a lot more in your favor to run that higher gear. Um, and here we can see the rest of the gears uh, up through fourth gear. And, you know, a theoretical, if you could wind that car out in top gear to 6,000 RPM, you know, it's a 200 mile an hour car. Obviously, it doesn't have the power to do that. But, and you're lumbering along at 17 or 1,970 RPM, it's 65 miles an hour. Which is great, you know, the car will run 100 mile an hour plus all day long without any issue. But uh, I, don't, I don't know who does that. Here we see the, um, the, the 3.69 rear gear uh, and the differences between uh, that and the, the factory gear on these shift points. 31 miles an hour uh, running through first gear up the red line. Big difference. And here's your other gear changes um, up to, and you know, some people may not be happy with that, you know, 120 mile an hour running up to, uh, to red line. Um, you know, I don't think many people spend much time over a hundred mile an hour, but you know, I understand, but you know, you're running 3,200 RPM at uh, 65 miles an hour it may be too much for somebody. Um, I, I went with the, the extreme on this. I went with the the, uh, the highest rear gear that I could. My Mopar's got 410 gears in it. Um, and, you know, with a four-speed, uh, you know, my old Mopar's four-speed too. Um, you know, that car, I'm running, you know, 55, 60 mile an hour. I'm running over 3,000 RPM. But, again, it, it's a whole different animal. And I'm not taking it on trips. Um, so I would say somewhere splitting the difference between, you know, a 224 rear gear and a, this gear, maybe something in the low threes would probably be extremely beneficial. I think the 500E came with, what, a 280 rear gear. Um, so I would, you know, you could probably run a, a 320, 330, somewhere around there, whatever's available. I don't know what, what is available in between, but you're probably going to keep up with a 500E. Just with the better gearing. Now, maybe on the top end, he's going to, you know, 500, he's going to pull. Um, and it's obviously going to pull a higher top speed. But that leverage is going to it's going to make a big difference. Um, and then, you know, I went ahead and ran it with uh, the five speed that I'm going to be running with the 369 rear gear. And the five speed is going to spread out those gears a lot better. 
and it, it, it's gonna it's it's gonna help everything. It's gonna give me uh, a lot higher top end speed. Um, while you know, still giving me the uh, the leverage down low to do uh, nice acceleration. So, uh, what are we? Thirty five mile an hour in first gear, and then here's the other gear changes. You know, up to a theoretical one hundred and fifty miles an hour, which I'll never be anywhere near there. Um, but with the the tire size I want to run, which is a two forty five, um, a two forty five fifty sixteen, probably run a drag radial on the back. I'm at 2,600 RPM at 65 miles an hour. And to me, that's, that's perfectly acceptable. Um, you know, that, that 400E, that, that engine, the 117, it'll run 3,200 RPM all day long without any issues. But some people may be uncomfortable with that, and that's understandable. But you would have to be willing to accept the ABS and ASR issues. So for me personally, uh, I'm willing to accept that. Even if I had a really nice 400E, I wouldn't care if I did not have any lock brakes because I would want the performance. Um, but some people like all their stuff to work, and that's, that's, that's respectable. I understand that. But if I have a 400E, I'm looking to throw a 1000 bucks at the car and make it uh, run significantly better outside of maybe throwing nitrous on it. But you could, you could run this rear gear and know that you're not going to hurt anything and that the performance is going to be uh, amazing.